हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक वंस अगेन टू क्लासरूम टीवी डू विजिट आवर वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 क्लासरूम टीवी डॉट इन एंड आल्सो डाउनलोड द क्लासरूम टीवी ऐप ऑन योर एंड्रॉइड मोबाइल फोन्स फॉर एग्जॉस्टिव वीडियो कंटेंट इन द सब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स फिजिक्स केमिस्ट्री इंग्लिश बायोलॉजी सोशल स्टडीज प्लस IIT and NEET Foundation at extremely affordable rates across CBSE and state boards. Learning on the move was never so easy and was never so affordable too. In this and in the coming episodes, we will learn a very interesting lesson. Let us see. The moment you see this picture, what do you find in this one? You find a furniture showroom. Oh, the table with carved table with all the fine design and the cupboards and the dining table, bookshelves, beams, bars, what not. Really, when you go to a furniture showroom, you find a really exquisitely carved furniture. Which you want to buy and keep it in your house. You also find many decorative pieces too. Let us see one more. What is this? An exquisitely made women's what do you call handbag? Beautiful. The moment any modern woman looks at this, she feels like buying it. Then, here in this picture, I am sure you being so socially aware, here you can see her hair cut and uh, irregular and then here it is long and lustrous hair for long and thick hair. This is something somebody is advertising. And in the modern day, with the awareness for natural products and then the Ayurvedic products are natural products, chemical free, paraben free. You you keep hearing all so many things. Obviously, it is a it is sourced from these herbs and plants. These herbal products. But have you ever wondered where you got all these things? All this exquisite furniture has come. After all these forests are cut, huge logs are cut, put through machines, hand carving, designing, this you get. This beautiful handbag is made from, guess it, crocodile's leather. Oh. And this one, all these Seeds and flowers and all shrubs, barks, all these things are sourced from these plants and trees. So, what are these? A beautiful handbag is come from has come from the skin of this crocodile. It's a resource. All this lustrous hair, what you saw, the picture is for all these things are sourced from these plants and trees and the wooden furniture they are sourced from all these uh, logs. So, what do you come across the word? Resource, resource. Let us learn the definition of resource. A stock or supply of money, materials, staff and other assets that can be drawn on by a person or organization in order to function effectively. A stock of supply of money, materials, here we are discussing only of the materials part. Another definition is a natural feature or phenomenon that enhances the quality of human life, that enhances, improves the quality of human life. How? Now let us go back how it enhances. Now when you when, uh, you buy some luxurious uh, dining table and when guests come to your house, 
they feel happy, they feel impressed. Oh, so and so house when I went, I had a luxurious dining table, they served food on luxurious dining table and then I sat on a big table. Oh, she carries a beautiful bag. Oh, her hair is lustrous. So what happens? The quality of life, the luxury, all these things are enhanced. So, a natural feature or phenomenon that enhances the quality of human life is what we define resource as. Now with this background, I am sure you have guessed the name of the lesson, forest and wildlife resources. Forest and wildlife resources. In this lesson, we are going to learn, cover all these topics apart from introduction, flora and fauna in India, different types of flora means about the plants and fauna is about the animals. Different types of species, normal species, vulnerable species, vulnerable means easy, prone, prone to destruction or being destroyed. Then endangered species on the brink of this thing, very rare species, endemic, limited to one specific location and then extinct species, now no more found. Then negative factors that cause depletion of flora and fauna we are going to learn and the conservation of forest and wildlife in India, what measures were taken we learn. Then types and distribution of forest and wildlife resources. Under this we, we learn about reserved forest, protected forest and unclassed forests and finally community and conservation. All these topics we are going to discuss in this lesson which gives you a broad overview of, of the forest and wildlife resources. This is only a stepping stone sort of thing. There is a lot and lot to be studied but this gives you a perspective. Based on this you can improve further to become a responsible citizen, to not to waste natural resources. I advise you to read some more other than what we are going to discuss in this lesson 2. Now, we will discuss first introduction. Here as is the wont of CBSC or NCRT rather, they take you through some unknown topic by reading that. It sets you thinking. It makes you think, oh, what is it? Instead of telling what, simply instead of like uh, what they say, peeling a banana and giving it in the loose lid, say, it should not be so easy. When something is thrown at you, which sets you thinking, that will make you to remember the content permanently something out of ordinary. Now here this thing, here it says, Narak, my lord, you are the creator of music in the world of Lepchas. Lepchas are one tribe, in the Sikkim and the Bhutan corner, Nepal, Bhutan, Sikkim, that corner. Oh Narak, my lord, let me dedicate myself to you. Let me gather your music from the springs, from the springs, from the rivers, from the mountains, from the forests, the insects and the animals. Let me gather your music from the sweet breeze and offer it to you. This is a Lepcha folk song from northern part of West Bengal. Narak. My Lord, you are the creator of music in the world of Lepchas. He is the creator of music, means some positive thing in life. Music anybody, everybody likes. But something what to say, it is a sweet music to hear. Somebody says, oh you got 100 out of 100 or you won a lottery. It's, it, it, it's like a sweet music. So here, you are the creator of music in the world. In the world of Lepchas, oh Narak, my Lord, let me dedicate myself to you by, I mean, by way of thanking you for filling my world with music, not the literal music. Let me gather your music from the springs, from the brooks that are flowing, the rivers, the mountains, the forests, the insects, and then basically 
it is what you say the so the, the soul of the creator is there in every living being and non every what you call every speck of the earth to say simply we say living and non living but still we know that in the chemistry and physics lessons we learned that vibrations electronics proto electrons protons neutrons the vibrations the electromagnetic waves what are they a manifestation of the supreme god let me gather a music from the sweet breeze you enjoy the breeze also all these things and offer it to you source is lepcha folk song from northern part of west bengal now here we have sikkim darjeeling and then sikkim here northern part of west bengal this is kanchenjunga that is the mountain lepchas deem it as their god it is somewhere here kanchenjunga and of course here we have nepal and here we have bhutan so this is a what you call indigenous people of this region it is their song so basically what do you understand when you read this poem they are thankful to the supreme god for the nature they are thankful to the god for the nature for the natural resources we saw the lesson what is what do they say forests insects animals mountains rivers we are going to learn about all these things this is how insanity brings you from the poem also it is taking out the essence of this lesson extracting the juice in this poem they are putting it into this lesson to make you understand the importance of nature with that basic idea we will go ahead there are millions of living beings starting from microorganisms bacteria lichens to banyan trees elephants and blue whales so here from micro to macro the smallest minutest to the biggest bacteria lichens and blue whale what is it there are millions of living beings across the spectrum such a broad spectrum of living beings we have so we should be thankful to the supreme god this is this entire habitat has immense biodiversity biodiversity means living different varieties humans along with all living organisms form a complex web of ecological system in which we are only a part and very much dependent on this system for our own existence you are a minus minuscule perc percentage in this complex ecological system and we are dependent on this for our own survival because we don't create our own food we are dependent on others whether it's plants or animals let us not go in details but without plants and without animals we can't survive but plants can survive without humans animals can survive without humans but on plants and our other animals but unfortunately we humans can't produce our own food so we are dependent on that thing for example the plants animals and microorganisms recreate the quality of air we breathe the water we drink and the soil that produces our food yes we all know when you throw a degradable product let us say you throw a mango a, a rotten mango on the soil it decays and degrades and then whatever the nutrients are there in the particular fruit it goes into the soil 
and if all the factors favor well, it may sprout, you may get a mango tree again, plant sapling, it may grow or else at least what happens is these bacteria degrade it, they break it down and it affects the quality or recreate the quality of air we breathe also. Sometimes we get beautiful smell, sometimes it is a foul smell, so the quality of air also is recreated. The water we drink, pure water, sometimes we get very pure water, and sometimes of course dirty water, muddy water, foul water, all these things and the soil that produces our food also the quality improves or it goes down depending on the situation. Forests play a key role in the ecological system as these are also the primary producers on which all other living beings depend, primary producers. Basically, forests are the primary producers on which all the beings, all the living beings depend, the habitats or the produce. We are all dependent on the uh, forests, the primary producers, which you learn in, learn in your biology lesson. We will say about the flora and fauna in India. Every area has some animals or plants unique to it and India is one of the world's richest countries in terms of its vast array of biological diversity. The types of trees, plants, we get what in South India or what North India, Western India, they are all different. Some of them are common and the mind boggling number of variety species you come across. And also these animals, plants, trees, diversity. Possibly twice or thrice the number yet to be discovered. Whatever are discovered, we have made a copious record of all these things. What about undiscovered? More than two or three times the number what we know are still are yet to be discovered. Once in a while you keep seeing in the newspapers and magazines some new bird is, has been discovered, new snail has been discovered, new snake has been discovered. It is a long and arduous journey before all the species are recorded and made a note of because some of them are so in so interior places where humans dare not enter to do research. Still people risking their lives, they go to do research and bring us uh, immense knowledge for which we should be thankful to them. These diverse flora and fauna are so well integrated in our daily life that we take these for granted. Yeah, have you ever thought by looking at cat or a dog or a donkey or a horse or a pig or a crow? or a sparrow, pigeon, have you ever kept aside, spent some time to think about them, how, how do they live, where are they from, what are we doing to, him, to, to them, are they useful to us or are we useful to them. Such things, have you ever spent some time to think about them, no. We take it for granted, though we learn about crow, oh crow is a scavenger, but that's all we just think of. But what role does it do? We do not think much about the vultures, we, though we read in our biology lessons they are dying because of the, the extinct population because of this uh, diclofenac uh, medicines what we are giving to buffaloes and all these things, they are preying on the decaying uh, carcasses and then dying. But we need to give a lot, allocate some time to think about these things, but sadly we take it for granted. But lately they are under great stress mainly due to insensitivity to our environment. We are, we, we are least bothered, we are least bothered about our environment and of course because of that we have, we are facing it now, the pollution, global warming, unseasonal rains, intense heats, what not and of course a tsunami and all these things, but still we are yet to learn lesson. We do learn albeit bitter ones when there are severe floods or cyclones. Some estimates suggest that at least 10 percent of India's recorded wild flora and 20 percent of its mammals are on the threatened list. 
they are threatened list means they are about to become extinct in a precarious position. We might see 10 percent of India's recorded wild flora and 20 percent of mammals. We may not find maybe another 40, 50 years. When you grow up or when your children, they will be reading only textbooks. Oh, my grandfather told me that so and so animal was there once upon a time. It becomes a once upon a time. Unless we take remedial measures now, unless we understand the implications of our, of our actions, how they affect the flora and fauna, we should become responsible citizens. Many of these would now be categorized as critical, that is on the verge of extinction, on the verge of extinction almost at the verge of means you can say almost almost extinct what are they like cheetah then pink headed duck then mountain quail so beautiful forest spotted owlet, Madhuka insignius, a wild variety of Mahua, these in Jharkhand areas, the Santals, the Mundas, they are fond of this Mahua. And then Habardia heptaneuron, a species of grass. I spent a lot of time to source and get all these pictures. For you to appreciate the lesson, not just by learning by rote memory or by reading the text with an impersonal touch. I want a personal touch with you. I want you to understand and under, go deep into the lesson, to understand the implications of human's irresponsibility and indifference to the nature, to the environment. All these things are on the threatened list, almost on the verge of becoming extinct. In fact, many species may have already been lost, inclusive of small animals, insects and plants. Many of them would have even lost. We do not know because we have not made an entry of all the living species what are there in India. Based on the International Union for Conservation of Nature and Union Resources, the different categories of existing plants and animal species are classified as based on the International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources, IUCN, the different categories of existing plants and animal species are classified as, let us see the classification of plants and animals, dangerous, endangered, rare, extinct, all these things we learn. Normal species. The number first one is species whose population levels are considered to be normal for their survival, such as cattle, sal, pine, rodents, etc. Their life is like they are not going to, they are not in the endangered list. All the squirrels, gerbil, chipmunk, mouse, prairie dog, flying squirrels, and then sal trees, and then the pine trees. They have a robust, uh, what you call, life pattern. They can survive. So they are not threatened. Their life is not in question. Next is endangered species. These are species which are in danger of extinction. Extinction means vanishing. They are on the verge of vanishing. The survival of such species is difficult if the negative factors that have led to negative factors that have led to a decline in their population continues to operate. The factors which are negative to their growth. Now, for example, let us say you have a mango tree at home. It is giving fruits. The negative factor is if you keep lopping the branches or cutting the branches, let us say 
it falls, the, I mean it's becoming huge. And the trees you have, you have planted other, you have planted other small potted plants you have, and because of the extreme shade, they are not going properly. What do you do? You cut the branches. The poor tree takes lot of time to recoup. You are not satisfied with the light, the sunlight which is falling down. You cut the whole branches. Cutting is a negative factor for the growth of that particular tree. Your idea is to get sunlight for the smaller plants under the tree. But in the bargain, you are becoming a negative factor by way of cutting the tree, cutting the branches. One fine day, if you keep continuing, it will die. So, unless remedial measures are taken, this is an example only. So, negative factors have to be addressed. The examples of such species are black buck, crocodile, Indian wild ass, Indian rhino, lion tailed macaque, and sangai. Sangai is a brow anter deer in Manipur. Black buck, that one. And then crocodile, of course, you know, we saw in the beginning of this uh, lesson. Indian wild ass. This is the wild ass. This is the black buck and wild ass. Then Indian rhino, rhinoceros. This also in endangered species. Then lion tailed macaque. This is lion tailed macaque. Then other one is Shanghai. Bro anter deer in Manipur. This is a Manipur based area. Here. These are only examples. These are only the examples of the endangered species. Of course, the, little, the list is pretty long. Only few have been mentioned here. So, you should appreciate. Appreciate means here, I am not saying you should applaud it and understand. Think, apply thought. Then vulnerable species. What do you mean vulnerable? Some of you must be vulnerable to cold. In winter seasons, as soon as the winter season sets in, your nose gets blocked. For some of them, they don't get any block. I'm strong, they say. Some are vulnerable. Pretty weak, uh, what you call constitution. So here, vulnerable are these are species whose population has declined to levels from where it is likely to move into endangered category. They are likely to move into this endangered categories. Unless negative factors are removed, these things will not survive. And here vulnerable species are likely to move into endangered species if the negative factors continue to operate. Examples are blue sheep, it is not blue color, it is called Bharal, B H A R A L, Bharal in Himalayan region, it is called Bharal also. It is called blue sheep. Asiatic elephant, then Gangetic dolphin. These are vulnerable species. They are likely to go into endangered category. Then we have rare species. Species with small population may move into endangered or vulnerable category if the negative factors affecting them continue to operate. Negative factor. Always here also you have what is a negative factors. Here also negative factors. What are factors which are affecting their life? From vulnerable, they are likely to get endangered, and rare species may go into endangered, vulnerable, or even endangered unless the negative factors are removed or proper remedial actions are taken. Examples such species are Himalayan brown bear, wild Asiatic buffalo. 
desert fox and hornbill etc of course we are just giving dropping a few names himalayan brown bear then wild asiatic buffalo then what do you have desert fox pretty cute desert fox and then colorful hornbill they are now becoming rare you see once in a while you come across them then what do you have endemic species endemic species are those which are only found in some particular areas usually isolated by natural or geographical barriers natural or geographical barriers they are unique to the particular place endemic examples of such species are andaman teal nicobar pigeon andaman wild pig mithun in arunachal pradesh as the, as you can see this is endemic to andamans and this is endemic to nicobar and again andaman wild pig and uh, mithun in arunachal pradesh they are endemic to those regions so teal andaman teal then nicobar pigeon beautiful it is then wild pig and then mithun these are all the different uh, animals which are endemic species then we have extinct species these are species which are not found after searches of known or likely areas where they may occur a species may be extinct from a local area region country continent or the entire earth extinct means no more seen examples of such species are asiatic cheetah and then of course pink head duck these two are extinct species the negative factors that cause such fearful depletion of the flora and fauna are how humans are have transformed nature have transformed nature into a resource obtaining directly or indirectly from the forests and wildlife what do you get from wildlife wood barks leaves rubber medicine dyes food fuel fodder manure you can add skin thus depleting forests and wildlife for our luxurious item we want a crocodile handbag or leather skin bag or snake skin belt kill a snake and make a belt calf shoe uh, i mean tender calf uh, calf leather what you say a calf is slaughtered and with the skin the shoe is made just because it should be very comfortable we are consumer we become consumers the consumer is luxury extreme craving for luxury or unique item exquisite items at a, but at what cost to satisfy your luxury craving for luxury you are harming the nature you means the humans what do you get directly indirect what do you get wood barks you peel the barks of trees for medicines or any other items rubber medicines dyes wood food fuel fodder manure etc thus depleting forests and wildlife the greatest damage inflicted on indian forests was during the colonial period when we were under the british rule due to the expansion of railways agriculture commercial and scientific forestry and mining activities they were inflicted on indian forests during the colonial period it became the maximum even after independence agricultural expansion continues to be one of the major causes of depletion of forest resources in the colonial period what happened for expansion of railways the railways were introduced in india by during the colonial period during the british period now these railway tracks can you see these things they are called sleepers these sleepers are wooden blocks forest trees are cut and then they are made into these blocks wooden blocks they are put on the earth on that the rail tracks are put you can see one more picture will understand better 
this wooden block this is a wooden block on which the tracks are bolted to hold them in place where do you get this wooden blocks called sleepers from forest by cutting the trees so in the bargain many trees were cut this is only one example and then for mining this is in the midst of forest this whole place is dug out before digging this was all part of a forest we don't know how many animals were living there we don't know how many uh, rare trees were there plants herbs were there but all this is now gone so mining and railways what not so these are all the causes for the depletion of natural resources between 1951 and 1980 according to the forest survey of india report over 26200 square kilometers of forest area was converted into agricultural land forest land was converted into agricultural land jhum cultivation shifting cultivation substantial parts of the tribal belts especially in the northeastern and central india have been deforested or degraded by shifting cultivation or we say jhum cultivation a type of slash and burn agriculture to bring more land into uh, cultivation the trees are cut and once they dry burnt cutting is maybe one day's job maybe after two days you burn them but it takes years for the trees to grow remember my dear students it's always easy to destroy and very difficult to construct criticizing somebody is very easy but behaving responsibly is very difficult being a role model is very difficult but speaking of being a role model is easy but practicing being a role model is difficult similarly cutting the trees is very easy you cut the trees burn them or maybe after uh, after once the trees dry burn them plow the land and bring it into cultivation have your food grains and then happy but what do they do this season they cut here next season they go and cut somewhere here it's called shifting cultivation next year again they go somewhere here and cut the land uh, cut the forest in the bargain what's happening the forest cover is getting depleted and in the bargain some very rare plants and trees and also the habitat of the wild animals also is getting reduced now we see in newspapers uh, for what to call tigers hunting the uh, carrying the sheep or goat or hen from villages why because the forest covers are cut they don't have habitat to live in in search of the food they start entering the human areas and unfortunately if they taste blood human blood they become man eaters too they are not coming to us we are going into the forests we humans are entering the forest with this we conclude this episode of the lesson forest and wildlife resources and the remaining we will continue in the coming episodes meanwhile do visit our website classroomtv.in and also download the classroom tv app on your android mobile phones to watch these videos not only the subject even maths physics chemistry english biology plus iit and neat foundation at extremely affordable rates across cbsc and state boards meanwhile do read the lesson too and watch the video we'll be meeting you in the next episode have a good day